The red, green, and blue knobs need to be centered, which is their zero position. Move the slider all the way to the left. Turn the in and out knobs all the way down. The three position switches need to be in their center position. Two position switches need to be in their down position, which is their off position. The output encoder contains all of the video outputs for the module and usually for your entire video synthesizer. Cables connected to the component output are going to our recording device. You could also use the composite outputs and the S-video output. On the left side we have the input decoder and this is where you will input um, external video devices for processing. We're going to connect a DVD player Now that we have these inputs connected, these four outputs represent the different uh, color and luminance channel information in the video signal. The top jack uh, is going to output the brightness information, and then the bottom three are going to represent the three separated red, green, and blue color channels of the signal. Those can be patched anywhere in your modular synthesizer for experimentation. Right now we're going to patch them directly into the channel A input of the colorizer and compositor. And as we attach all three color channels, we can see our Buffy the Vampire Slayer DVD running straight through to the output. The animation and key generator section is a control voltage generator, which is controlling the colorizer and compositor section via an automatic connection. The output is normal to the switched input of the composite voltage control input jack. So whenever the slider is fully to the left, we see channel A is active, as is currently the case. And then if we move it to the right, we can see that channel B is active, which since there's no input source there, it's just black. So we can use the slider to fade in and out. The in and out speed knobs here can be increased to create a lag effect when the slider is moved. So as we increase the end knob, as we move the slider from left to right, it will slowly fade. This feature is useful in performance applications when you may want to program in a very long transition while you adjust something else in your patch. When we press the button here, the position of the output is inverted, but the fade time still apply. So we can trigger a transition from right to left or left to right, whatever is the opposite of where the slider is, by pressing this button. Um, if we insert a trigger source into the trigger input jack, we can control that with an external pulse, such as from this LFO. Next, we're going to explore the cycle mode of the visual cortex. If we move the slider to its center position, the output will be a full-scale waveform. Turning the cycle mode on, and you can see that the output is now cycling according to the time set between the in and out speed knobs. If we increase the slider position, we will increase the amplitude of the output waveform, creating a fade in, pause, fade out, pause type of control. If we increase it to the left, we are going to decrease the amplitude of the waveform, which may be useful for more subtle modulations. When we turn the mix switches on near the RGB knobs in our colorizer and compositor section, we mix the output of these knobs with the respective channels. So we're going to turn our mix A knob on, and this allows us to adjust the color balance of the channels of our external video feed.
We can also use the RGB knobs to control the contrast or gain of all of our incoming external video channels. In order to do that, we want to apply the knobs to the other channel. And then we're going to set our um, composite mode to multiply. Zeroed out and we have just black. But we can add back in the amplitude of all three color channels. Next we're going to take the luminance channel from our external video feed and apply a color to it. We're going to patch the luma output into the colorized input. Now we're going to send the signal to channel A, which we have selected here. As we turn up the color knobs, we're able to just send the brightness information to whatever color we want, allowing us to create a monochromatic or sepia-toned variant of our video source. For this patch, we're going to turn on the spectrum mode. When the spectrum mode is on, dark values in our external video feed are going to be applied to the blue channel. Middle gray values are going to be green, and then highlights are going to be red. This gives us a U-map of the luminance signals in our video feed. In this patch, we're going to plug back in all of our RGB channels to channel A. We're going to make sure to reset our spectrum and mix switches. And we're going to send the Luma channel from our input decoder into the input on our animation and key generator section. Additionally, we're going to switch the animation and key generator section into key mode. There are two key modes, positive and negative key. As we adjust the slider, now we're controlling the threshold of keying which is going to end up switching back and forth between channel A or B, depending on how bright our external video source is. If we wanted to add some color, we are able to turn Buffy into a new wave video. If we switch to negative key mode, this relationship is going to be reversed. Generating shapes with a video synthesizer is similar to luma keying, but we're going to take gradient waveforms being generated by the RAM generator and send those to our key generator. Let's take just the horizontal output for now. We're going to turn key mode on, just like in our last patch. And as we adjust the threshold, we are creating a wipe between channel A and channel B. The RAM generator section has many different waveforms. Definitely explore all of them. This is the horizontal and vertical output. In its default position, it creates a diagonal wipe. But if we turn the shape and mirror switches all the way up, we're going to make a circle. Let's put it in negative key mode so that you can see that. Here are some of the other shapes. We can, of course, apply our previous techniques with animation to make our shape move automatically. With external modules, you can enable more fine-tuned control over the key generator by adding signals in to your ramp source before sending it to the key generator. Let's try adding some of the frequency band outputs on the audio frequency decoder with our horizontal and vertical ramp mix. 
using the quad video attenuator slash mixer by Brown Cheese Only. So as you can see now, as I talk, the shape is going to be modulated accordingly. It's the 1.3 kilohertz frequency band that is contributing to the threshold of the shape in question. You can also try more primitive techniques, like poking a cable. We're going to just experiment by doing a lot of patching right now. We're going to just kind of plug our inputs in our colorizer and compositor with all sorts of different signals. So you can see all of these ramps into the different color channels in our B channel has given us this nice metaphysical gradient. We can also patch signals directly into the composite input. You can see there's a gradient shape that is fading between channels A and B. Don't forget to try out the different compositing modes because they all have something different that they do with the signal. Try different oscillators, different audio sources. Try swapping the different color channels on your inputs. To wrap up these basic patches, we're going to look at the two output effects in the colorizer and compositor, the solarized and negative modes. These are both analog processing functions, um, which are applied to the colorizer and compositor output before it's sent to the output encoder. Negative is pretty simple. It's just gonna invert the color channels and give us a color inverted version of our output. The solarized function is a little bit more complicated. It's going to take values that are below black and invert those, making them positive signals again. If we subtract from our video source, you can see that we're creating an effect similar to photographic solarization. Full RGB solarization like this is one of my favorite analog video effects. As you continue to explore the visual cortex, Remember that there is no wrong or right way to patch it. Any output can go to any input. You can take an output and send it to multiple destinations at the same time with a stack cable or multiple module. You can send in any audio or control voltage source directly into the inputs. You can mix the outputs with those control and audio signals and send them back in. There are no limitations. Best wishes on your video journey.